if you're having trouble connecting to your C-Star with software like Nina, SGP, Stellarium, SharpCap, and others that work with Alpaca devices, you're going to want to stay tuned to this video as I may save you a lot of frustration. I am Curtis and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to give you five tips in the event you're having difficulty connecting to or staying connected to your C-Star when you're using software like Nina SGP, SharpCap, Stellarium, and other software that are designed to work with Alpaca devices. Now, if you're totally unfamiliar with how to even begin connecting your PC to the C-Star, you're going to want to take a look at the video I produced called C-Star PC Control. Start there. That'll show you the basic two methods for connecting a PC running software like Nina to your C-Star. I'll put a link to that video down below this one where it says more. Tap on that. It'll expand. And there you can find a link to that video. So tip number one, you don't have an ASCOM problem. I see a lot of people on internet forums who are trying desperately to solve the connection problem by uninstalling and reinstalling ASCOM, looking for ASCOM drivers and so forth. C-Star is an Alpaca device and Alpaca is not ASCOM. ASCOM is an astronomy protocol that was designed to interface between PCs and astronomy equipment, including mounts, cameras, focusers, and so forth. It works on Windows and connects between a PC and the device via a COM port. So you have to be connected with a USB cable. Alpaca is something completely different. First of all, it's not Windows based, it's universal. It does not require COM ports. It does not require a USB cable. It's a protocol that allows us to connect either by Wi-Fi or by an ethernet connection between a PC and an Alpaca enabled device like the C-Stars. So there are no drivers to download and there is no need to have ASCOM on your PC to be able to connect to the C-Star with programs like Nina. Alpaca is built into the C-Star by the folks at ZWO. All we need on our PC is software that speaks Alpaca. And that includes Nina, SGP, SharpCap, Stellarium, and I'm sure there are others that I'm not aware of at this moment. So if you're having trouble making that connection, don't waste your time going down the ASCOM path because ASCOM is not the reason you're unable to connect. The second tip is that you have to first connect to the C-Star with your C-Star app, either on your phone or a tablet. And it appears that the C-Star app needs to still run in the background even though you're controlling the C-Star with software like Nina or SharpCap running on your PC. I came to that conclusion by doing an experiment one afternoon where I connected to the C-Star with the app on my phone, got the C-Star up and running, and then connected to the C-Star with Nina running on my laptop. Now, once I connected to the C-Star with Nina, I then shut the app down on my phone by simply swiping and closing the app without turning off the C-Star. So the C-Star was up and running and connected to Nina, and I kept sending commands from Nina to the C-Star to keep it actively engaged. I sent commands to the motor, I sent commands to the focuser, commands to the filter wheel. So I kept Nina engaged with the C-Star over 15 minutes. At the end of 15 minutes, the C-Star actually shut down and I lost connection between Nina and the C-Star. So it seems to me, based on that simple experiment, if you close the app on your phone or your tablet, the C-Star itself will shut down after 15 minutes because it thinks it's inactive, even though you continue to send commands to it through your Alpaca-based software, like Nina in my case, and keep it engaged, it will still shut down. So tip number two, so even though you're not using the C-Star app to control the C-Star, I think C-Star needs to see that the app is still up and connected to it. Otherwise, it'll shut down after the 15-minute timeout period and you'll lose connection to your PC. Now, my third tip involves connecting to the C-Star when in station mode 
And this is a problem that happened to me not once, but a couple of different times. I had the C-Star up and running. I had the station mode, as you can see here, set to on, and I was still unable to connect to the C-Star. So for me, the solution was to turn off, simply turn off the station mode, and then turn it back on. So basically cycle C-Star out, out of and back into the station mode. And in that case, I was able to immediately connect to the C-Star via Nina. So if you're working in the station mode, you can't get Nina or SharpCap or whatever you're using to find the C-Star, try turning off the station mode and then turning it right back on. That worked for me. Hopefully it'll work for you if you're having that problem. Now, tip number four, which only applies to Nina, is the scan for devices button. So if Nina doesn't automatically find the Alpaca devices, such as the camera, the focuser, the filter wheel, and the mount itself inside the C-Star, you're going to have to tap on this button here in the middle, which is the scan for devices button. That way Nina will do a scan for any alpaca devices that it can find. And in that case, it should be able to find the alpaca devices inside the C-Star. The fifth and final tip also only applies to Nina. If you're still having trouble making the connection between Nina and the C-Star devices, you want to go to the options equipment page. In the lower right-hand corner of this page, you'll see ASCOM Alpaca Discovery, and you go down a few rows to Discovery Duration. That's the amount of time that Nina will use to scan for your Alpaca devices. I think the default is one second for this. You might want to increase that to two, three, four, or even five seconds to see if that helps Nina to discover the Alpaca devices. So those are my five tips to help you troubleshoot if you're having trouble connecting between Nina and your C-Star. I'm sure there can be other reasons why you cannot connect, but these are the main ones I've seen reported by folks on the astronomy forums. And even if it's not one of these, at least you can rule these out quickly and not waste your time troubleshooting down a path that is not the root cause of your problem. So hope you found this video helpful. If so, please don't forget to like the video. You may also want to subscribe so you're alerted when I post other videos like this online as well. So thank you for watching and clear skies.